All right, YouTubers, what's going on? We're out shooting today. Shooting the newest addition to my family. Caltech Sub 2000 Gen 2. Glock 19 edition. Super lucky to have just got one of these for a really good price. Most people were price gouging the heck out of them. So, gonna shoot a bunch of different types of ammo. This new Freedom Munitions American Steel. Some uh, federal aluminum. Then I got some laser brass. We're actually trying out a bunch of different types of magazines too. So that's for the uh, Magpul P mags for clocks. Got some of the ES, ETS, excuse me, magazines as well. And I've noticed so far these don't drop free. ETS. This is a 31 rounder shooting the federal aluminum. So, just got my target a little bit downrange here. <laughs> and I've already twisted it around. Nice. So, so far, so good. But my target's all turned away. Let's go fix it, actually. All right, We've got our target fixed. Let's keep rolling here. Okay, so we are out. Now the ETS mag did not lock back and it does not drop free it kind of uh, have to uh, pull them out of there let's try the 17 round Well, so they don't lock back, but they uh, they don't drop free. In fact, they kind of have to rip them out of there, but they don't malfunction, so that's good. Let's try some P-Mags now. Let's see. What do we got shooting here? Now that I think of it, the Sub 2000 doesn't have a bolt hole looking feature. That's why none of these mags are locking back, even the P mags. But everything's functioning 100% out of this gun. mags and more uh, freedom munitions American steel ammunition yes we are recording Well, that bolt, bolt, bolt hold open feature would be really nice. So, all right, last we got like a Korean 
33 rounder. This thing functioned almost 100% in my Glock 19, not quite, so we'll see what happens here. Now we're already having a feeding issue. There we go. So this gun is still got some more rounds, but so far 100% reliability with all kinds of ammo, different magazines. That's a good sign. It definitely improved the front sight on this gun too. It was plastic and cheap before, now it's nice and metal. The, the rear sight's still a little small. Um, I don't really consider this to be like a precision weapon, but it's got a really tiny peep. And I know you could just like basically, if you wanted to, you could file that out, or uh, there is a company that makes an, an aftermarket sight. I'll have to remember the name of the company later, but. So the front sight's improved, the back sight is still. Hard to see. Tell spring is hit here because all the four wheelers are out on these roads. So good to go. Blazer brass, good to go. Three different kinds of magazines. One of the coolest things is it folds up. All, All right, right guys, so back from the range, we'll call it shooting, and 100% reliability with the Keltec Sub 2000 Gen 2. Um, we tried again three different types of ammo: the Federal Aluminum, the American Steel from Free Munitions, which is a steel cased ammo, but it has a brass um, coating on it, and then uh, Blazer brass. Tried all the different types of mags. ETS, they, they all function 100%, every single mag. These will not drop free, and they will not, and they kind of, they're kind of sticky. And I think it has to do with all this, like, you can kind of see the wear marks on them. These do drop free on my Glock 19, no problem, but uh, this must have just a, a, a thicker mag well. So that's easily remedied. You could just sand that down a little bit inside if you want to use these mags, because they run 100%, so, and they're less, they're not very expensive. Um, the Korean mag ran flawlessly too, which was sweet, and this one does drop free and lock, excuse me, doesn't lock back. None of them lock back because that's a feature of the gun that's missing, not the magazines. And then the P mags all ran perfect. So three different types of mags, three different types of ammo, 100% reliability. Um, fun gun to shoot, always has been. I had a Gen 1, and they've made some seriously good improvements here. So let's just talk about those a little bit. First thing I will, that just jumps out to me is the front sight is a lot nicer, it's metal, uh, that one was plastic and I've had it actually like fall off while shooting. Uh, it's also got a threaded barrel and it's got a rail system. You have your Picatinny rail on top and bottom and then you have M-Lock on the sides. So you can use a lot of the Magpul M-Lock accessories, any kind of M-Lock accessory should work on this gun. So you've got a lot more options for mounting. Um, I have like just a Magpul hand stuff on there right now. You can do a foregrip, you could do anything on that bottom rail is not going to affect how it folds. The only thing that sucks is the top rail, you throw a red dot optic on here and you can't fold the gun. Um, that's the one downside. And that is a downside a little bit because the iron sights, the front sight's great, but the back sight's teeny. Um, it's, it's just really, really small. It's a really like precise sight, but for this kind of gun, I don't, you know, and in, in you saw in the video, I was shooting a black steel target in the shade, and I had a hard time making out the target. So, one thing to consider. 
Um, I would probably open up this rear sight somehow, make the peep a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see how you do lose a little bit of accuracy, but you're not going to shoot in this gun, you know, out past 100 yards. So, um, let's see, what other changes have they made? Um, the grip, the, the texture on it is really nice, kind of like the KSG. The polymer feels a lot more solid, not as cheap as before. You have an extended bolt um, handle here that, that used to be like an aftermarket thing you had to do. That's been upgraded. And this uh, contraption here that, fold, that locks into place is better as well. So they've definitely made some really good enhancements to the weapon. Um, still folds perfectly. Safety is the same. It's just it's so cool. I, I just I mean I literally folded up and put it in my range bag. Took it to the range with me today. You know took out shooting. It was just that easy. So pretty fun. Something you could throw in your backpack, throw in your car. It'd be a great truck gun. It folds in half. You can. Stick it in something small, a briefcase, whatever. I did want to go over the trigger a little bit. I felt like trigger was pretty good on this, so I'm curious what the pull weight is. It is free and clear, because I am going to be pulling the triggers. Make sure of that. We're going to do a little trigger pull gauge on it, see what it comes up as. And that's eight pounds, which I don't think it's eight pounds. And that said eight pounds also. So maybe it is eight pounds. Yep. That's three straight pulls of eight pounds, so it feels a lot lighter than that though. That's weird. That's the consistent pull I keep getting. So, yep, can't get anything less. <laughs> Can keep trying though. One more. Nah, that was seven and a half pounds. So, it's around seven and a half to eight pounds. It's not the best. It is crisp. Just a little bit of take up. Nice crisp pull. Check out the reset. Eh, it's not a horrible reset, not great. So the trigger's fair, but it's fine. I mean, it does, it's just fine. It's not bad. You don't notice it when you shoot. It's not like you're like, whoa, this trigger's really heavy. It's fatiguing my hand or anything. It's not like that, so. Overall, I'm very pleased with this gun. Um, wanted to get another one since I've been carrying a Glock 19 again. Same magazines. Probably uh, going to be a good option. Um, like I said, many options for this gun. Pack gun, trunk gun, or truck gun, whatever you want to call it. Um, just to, you know, plinker at the range, whatever you want to do. So, so far so good with the kel Sub-2000. I'll do an extended uh, update or review later, but... Kind of wanted to show some shooting with the different types of ammo and the different magazines, and that'll work flawlessly. So, thanks for watching. All right, real quick, just when you thought the video was over, right? <laughs> One thing I've got to mention on this is this actually does another improvement over the Gen 1 is it has a length of pull adjustment built into the stock. You see this pin right here that pushes out, and you've got three different levels you can adjust that stock to fit you. So if you're a taller guy, you know, you have a longer um, length of pull, then you can do that. I, I'm just going to leave it how it is. I like how short and compact it is, but... And then I came up with a solution for the sights being a little hard to use. You can run a red dot sight on a 45 degree offset mount like this. And this is just a little primary arms um, reflex, mini reflex sight reviewed on the channel already. And I've got it on a 45 degree offset mount. And what's cool is you can still fold the weapon. Now it will not completely like um, lock together as you can see and you can you can kind of force it to do it not quite and I had to modify the uh, mount a little bit but you can still fold the weapon completely to store it in a backpack or something like that and you can still run a red dot sight on off offset mount so that's one way you can do it um, I think the smaller dots like this would work better you could run like a Bushnell TRS-25 or a, a primary arms or something but I don't think it'll fold as good and you know be a little bit bigger I kind of like this little setup. It was nice to use. So easy to easy to slide in with the 45 degree offset mount. And then I've got just a little cheapo flashlight that I had laying around. Probably upgrade that to a, a a streamlight or something. But 
I think this is the setup I'm going to run um, and have it be as a like a, a vehicle type gun. I mean, you can fold this thing up and store it under your car seat and be out of sight, out of mind. And um, I'm not sure yet. I'm, it's I think it's a good. If I was going to run it as like a, a primary carbine, like a self home defense gun, you could just mount an optic on here and not have to worry about folding it anyway, which is nice about the Gen 2 as well. So it's just a big improvement over the Gen 1, guys. I'm really digging it. So far, it's been 100% reliable, and it's just a really fun one. It's also really sm um, lightweight and small, so it's a good weapon for a woman or a, a child like my son would have no problem um, with this gun. This may end up you know, being kind of his go-to carbine, so to speak. So, all right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'll see you on the next video.